I think uh, where we were uh, last week is uh, store, right? If I'm not wrong, we completed it, uh, I guess. Yeah, so we were on the storage, you're right. Yeah, yeah. okay. So just recap, so this uh, whole thing about uh, GCP data engineering, uh, Google perspective, the data life cycle is in JSTOR process and analyze and explore and visualize. So the, uh, these are the really Google services or component. We, uh, we will uh, use it in a different solution and gate solution would be generally end to end, which is cutting horizontally across this. So we talked about in just uh, different services which are there. The primarily it is a batch and a streaming and how that would be. So PubSub is a component which is uh, really important on this uh, front. Streaming exam perspective as well. You may find uh, quite uh, questions on this. And uh, batch is our uh, normal life for a, any uh, really data site. So it's, uh, them quickly going through store. We talked about it. These are uh, how we can set these are different storages and uh, what is the really this is the most important uh, decision tree rather. So how how we can arrive at that which store to use it. Again, exam perspective, the, you will find it. it is, there are mm, yeah, there is quite a focus on this which storage you will choose. Okay, so top level it is structured RDBMS. So use uh, your uh, cloud SQL when it is a scale, you need RDBMS, multi region, and all those things. Then cloud spanner. Uh, then for mobility, it is cloud fire store and all that. When it is uh, 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 no SQL kind of thing, is cloud data store rest everything uh, structured and structured everything cloud storage it's more as a swiss knife you use it as the terminology everywhere and uh, these two are more when it is a large data is uh, more as a no sql but it's uh, iot and those kind of things multi-regional and all that uh, then big table and analytical data storage big query so it's really high level uh, these are the really services we talked about the uh, storage uh, firebase cloud sql as well we spoke if i'm not wrong uh, this uh, at this moment is mysql and postgresql limit is around 30 terabyte you can store it if you are going beyond it then uh, generally that is not suitable and it's for oltp workload uh, big table it is managed wide uh, column no sql this is a more internally used by google even for google search google analytics and everything even gmail so it's more as a wide column data store it is not entirely as a, it is a managed one but it is not a serverless kind of thing means you need to provision the cluster for big table and cloud sql on the contrary uh, spanner and bigquery and all that those are really serverless uh, it's you just use it and uh, pay as you need it so spanner as we spoke it is uh, more as a horizontally scalable relational database yeah so again the one terminology related to storage uh, we uh, we last week we touched base about the eventual consistency okay and uh, highly consistency so that is you can find some question related to that so uh, and the other one is uh, horizontal uh, horizontal scalable and vertical scalable so again this concept uh, generally should be knowing it's uh, regardless of any technology so horizontal scaling is uh, yeah you can go on adding uh, additional machines really that's the horizontal scalable and vertical scaling is yeah you make one machine what you have you add a uh, really power into it okay so the those uh, you may find it somewhat related question uh, somewhere option it may help it when it is horizontal scalable generally it is a spanner you should be considering it okay then cloud data store uh, is more as a no sql document database uh, it's uh, but it supports asset transaction as well and it's uh, 
uh, that we uh, use perspective exam perspective again i will say that yeah there would be options considering that when you store uh, your product catalog user information and all that is uh, in quite a work uh, in conjunction with your app engine that is nothing but your uh, uh, manage web server and uh, application server really okay so it works uh, quite uh, well over there in fact firestore is uh, not that much importance again exam perspective it's more related to uh, mobile and those kind of thing okay now big queries uh, the quite emphasize you can see on uh, exam perspective as well at a ground level use perspective as well okay so uh, we will not go deep as such here there is a, a you can have a separate session whenever it is needed it is uh, quite simple to use that way it's not a, a very complex stuff but uh, yeah you may find it number of questions related to bigquery okay. and uh, practically use perspective it is really quite good uh, that would be my opinion it's fully managed data warehouse uh, then it's really scale up to petabyte it uh, entirely managed serverless you use it only and pay that much uh, it's a to the past I will say architecture it is twofold so you have storage it is really beneath its cloud storage and which is a persistent storage and then uh, the compute is a uh, compute engine is on top of it and uh, you should be paying uh, you pay generally for persistent storage and as uh, on top of it how much we carry so is based on query how much compute is used that would be your uh, pricing mechanism so um, yeah, it is multi-regional, regional, it's a use it for batch loading as well as streaming. There is some, there are some charges about the stream load as such uh, as well. So there is some uh, that keep changing really. So that additional pricing would be there when you're using in that way. And um, yeah, then uh, uh, when it started, it's more that initial uh, BigQuery version was not supporting update. But now it's uh, support update as well, and uh, but there is still some limitation. I guess how many updates you can do in a month or something. Okay, it's uh, more as a columnar data store, and yeah, uh, you can uh, use it in uh, multiple way really. Now the, the newer version of uh, BigQuery, there is uh, uh, I think integration with R was there earlier itself. Now it is. Uh, uh, it has built-in functions for this uh, your machine learning as well so regression and all those uh, those are those functions are available as part of BigQuery uh, now the ready-made function you can use it those are built-in functions and uh, yeah you can uh, define quite a user defined functions as well and uh, okay I think that's big query and uh, really most important there are how to optimize query and all those so it really that level uh, exam perspective it's expectation uh, that you should be knowing it there are different even each query how it breaks and what are the different state states on that and how you can monitor those as well so it's really important uh, uh, topic that way I will say okay then what we have is ecosystem databases means whatever other databases you have sql server and oh, sorry for this typo so sql server mongodb and all that so you can use a host it on uh, your compute and use it it's simple nothing else on uh, google cloud marketplace uh, these are all these options are available which is with pre-built images and storage everything so you can use it uh, via marketplace there are generally some additional charges on top of it what the compute so you need to pay for compute as well as this some um, managed part of this okay and then it integrates with the uh, wider uh, your ecosystem for logging and everything and yeah 
those are the options a any question i think we covered this uh, storage part any question in the storage really uh, i think maybe if i may just uh, uh, ask uh, relating to oracle so oracle you need to migrate right if you maybe highlight this uh, on the databases option you cannot just use oracle uh, unless you yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah, your point is right. Now it's Oracle is tricky bit really on this. Okay, it's just, I don't know. I was hoping or still hoping that it uh, Google and Oracle support each other <laughs> and you can host Oracle, but no, it's still so, not so there. Looks like yeah. Yeah, Atul, let me let me add a, a point here. So. As, as we know, like there is a big rivalry between Oracle and Google. Uh -huh. So Accenture has basically created a managed service, which is a wrapper on top of the Oracle. So this is a managed service which you can uh, enable through the GCP market uh, space. And then through that, you can basically onboard Oracle services on GCP. Oh, okay. So you can host it as well. Is it I means so Oracle? How that works? It, yeah, yeah. It is. It oh. is a managed service that is hosted. But again, Accenture has got the IP. Ah, okay. That's interesting. But, okay. uh, yeah. Thanks example, for adding it. Yeah. I think from exam perspective, uh, maybe you should think about migrating <laughs> to <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> converting the data. I'm not sure unless they change it or uh, Google have supported this approach it's uh, tricky if you get this question in the exam for mm -hmm. the uh, so j just to uh, rephrase it uh, Google doesn't ask any question about the migration including uh, Oracle in the exams so because that's a kind of like uh, a specialized solution and uh, in the exam, they pretty much cover the basic uh, operations and the basic even if you talk about the migration, it's pretty much uh, talk about the SQL Server, MongoDB, uh, Firebase, etc. So I think you shouldn't worry about that. These are like industry specific use cases, which uh, is normally uh, you would be doing in the industry, but they won't be coming in, in, in the exam. Uh, yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I have not seen the question uh, in the exam, uh, but I have seen it in many of the um, uh, exam uh, practice to uh, helping uh, kind of things. But I and I, but it did not appear on the on the real exam. Uh, but I think uh, the purpose of these questions from the practice exam were to just highlight to people that. You cannot migrate Oracle. You have to uh, basically convert the, the the data and then load it up into the um, uh, the, the uh, MySQL or something. Totally agree. Yes. Uh, so uh, probably we uh, maybe later on I can I can cover maybe next week like what are the things which are specialized use cases uh, and uh, normally. There are tricky things which you normally do to take care of those specialized cases in GCP or maybe any any AWS or any cloud solution. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for adding it. And uh, yeah, it thumb rule again. Okay. Exam perspective. You no, know, it's uh, thumb rule. You can uh, consider it wherever if you have option that uh, within those multiple choice that. Okay, uh, go for corresponding Google service. Huh? Then mostly that's the correct option. Okay, that's the general expectation. Hmm? Exam perspective again, and not at a ground level as it is pointed out is very valid point. Ground level or use case is a bit different, but the exam perspective generally thumb rule. We can say that corresponding uh, use the Google service or component that would be the option okay yeah uh, can we go further really uh, now the next the data life cycle stage is process and analyze okay so yeah we ingested the data data is stored now and the next stage is in order to derive business value and insight from data it's uh, transform and analyze it 
okay so it is a processing framework uh, and uh, yeah what the tools we use then these are the three things we process then we analyze it and we try to understand it so processing is more from uh, yeah data is this is our normal story really your data from source system is cleansed, normalized, processed across multiple machines, stored in analytical systems and all that. So that uh, we can analyze it with uh, standard reports, query, ad hoc query, or we explore it more now, the more uh, we, uh, usage is in terms of now uh, understanding, which is uh, really machine learning and all those what we do. Okay, so that's the three areas so processing large scale data so the when it is large scale data processing those are the three uh, services it's more cloud data proc cloud data flow and uh, data prep okay so it, uh, now the, the the whole thing about uh, exam perspective is really uh, cloud data proc and cloud data flow you may get uh, quite a few questions is not expected anything as a coding related question and all that it's really these are all code heavy topics in a way actually when you use it but that that is not expected in exam it's exam is more that uh, what service uh, you will use it and more it's how you will use it okay you may find those uh, related question in that way is and uh, these are really quite important these two things okay so it's a cloud data proc is really is nothing but how to uh, your cluster you can have it uh, it's a managed cluster which is there on uh, gcp and you use it and uh, it's then it is part of uh, gcp ecosystem okay it will integrates with uh, other services Cloud uh, data flow is uh, more as a manage and serverless. Uh, I think if you please mute. I have muted them. Yeah, hello. Yeah. Uh, okay so cloud data proc is uh, existing when you use cloud data proc so when it is ex you have existing hadoop cluster and spark application and all that then uh, you go for cloud data proc hmm? and then you have machine learning existing your ecosystem is there and you use the data proc that's the way uh, go for it uh, i have uh, I, I have a, a real life experience with uh, with this we met with google and the company that I was uh, basically working for at the time, we built a huge uh, uh, cloud era Hadoop cluster, approximately 20 different, uh, 20 uh, servers and 20 slaves, two masters and, and 18 slaves. It's a huge cluster. And so uh, basically Google uh, came and they tried to persuade us to uh, uh, use it in the cloud and there are many benefits because we don't have to w touch any of the administration aspects of this huge infrastructure and it all will be and it will expand uh, on its own so this is but of course we uh, the company that i was working for at the time did not agree because they invested so much money and it was difficult for them to you know just uh, chuck all this money out and but this is a practical experience with the data uh, uh, I hope you don't mind just sharing this. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, but, uh, and it's a really um, in that way. If uh, any, if you have experience in actually working on Hadoop and all that, it's uh, uh, the administration is really quite. Uh, I will say, uh, okay, challenge rather a little Very bit headache as well. <laughs> yeah, a little bit headache only. <laughs> yeah, and especially the security. The yeah. security is quite very difficult because you need to have certain keys and these keys need to fly uh, to be exchanged on the fly. So uh, you, the, the way I was responsible for doing the design and working with the, with the uh, uh, Cloudera to manage this, 
But if you go to the cloud, it's basically you don't have to worry about the security aspect. Of yeah. course, you can ask Google how you secure it, and they can give you the best possible solution. But it was very, very challenging because I had to integrate it with Active Directory, and we have to segment it to make the keys uh, in a different segment within the cluster because they are more secure and put a firewall. It was a big story, mm-hmm. that, but it was a government area, so it was not possible to go to the cloud. That's why yeah. they had to build their own. Yeah, and uh, see the another challenge. What we see is uh, it's more of this Hadoop is really it's a family, right? All the components you have, and what version really matches with something and all that. That really is a uh, quite a challenge. But when it is a managed, that's again is an advantage. However, one more practical point is though it is said data proc and all that. It, this may not be that your whatever application or your e systems which are working on the prem that may not work as it in cloud data proc okay that is a practical aspect of it because of many reasons the versions and different things and all that okay so it's not that easy story that okay this works over there and all you may end up in uh, doing that okay host everything you have first as a compute corresponding host it over there start uh, working in cloud and then uh, really then migrate to data proc so that is also quite a practical way okay lift and shift really on compute as it's so that is still there which is not uh, that way it is google don't mention as such here but that is a practical so, way uh, okay. I, I think there is other uh, few other business models i mean especially if you have like your data scientist who's going to write the algorithm or who's going to write the uh, train the data or train the model you can then do the, use the cloud to do the training because accessibility is possible and you give people access or so you can do the testing in the cloud and then this is another way of uh, you know uh, yeah. making utilizing the cloud as well yeah okay so uh, thanks for sharing and as all uh, valid scenarios really exam perspective yes when uh, you can consider that when there is existing load and um, hadoop is there or existing ecosystem is there then uh, uh, yeah you can uh, consider the option which is uh, on those multiple choices where the data proc is the more appropriate thing okay mm-hmm as an option so that way exam perspective usage practically yeah there are a number of things you will okay second one uh, okay so that's what it is mentioned over there it is really managed apache hadoop oh sorry yeah it's managed apache hadoop apache spark it's it uh, has these components hadoop spark big hive and uh, i think uh, the if whatever you need additional when you launched cluster at that time you can uh, add those as initialization script and uh, just have those uh, installed as well uh, its advantages it's really low cost you can use preemptible instances as your worker nodes hmm? and uh, the cluster really launch in 90 seconds and that's the way uh, so the most important to use or typically use when i mention is on demand cluster uh, with cloud storage to store persistent data so you use it in that way rather than it is a persistent cluster really you launch the cluster when you need a processing and uh, have your persistent data in cloud storage uh, and uh, your cluster means hadoop cluster uh, you can point to your cloud storage as a data so use that only as a processing stuff and uh, yeah this is a quite uh, valid scenario as part of solution you use it uh, i was uh, part of such kind of uh, implementation and it worked quite okay so you launch it process it and uh, then uh, data is uh, only on the storage only okay and it well integrates with cloud storage bigquery cloud big table uh, you can use cloud logging and manage uh, monitoring okay uh, yeah uh, i think that's the data proc uh, is uh, 
managed hado quite important in the exam perspective and uh, really in a gcp journey from data side then the data flow which is uh, more serverless fully managed batch and stream processing and it is apache beam so it is apache beam based so the same code you can use uh, for uh, streaming as well as batch processing so it is uh, designed to simplify big data both streaming and batch workload uh, yeah so in the uh, uh, data proc it is more as a managed cluster but still you need to define the cluster you need to know what the capacity you expect all those things which are needed and a data flow which uh, on the other side it is really on demand it can take care of all this it uh, decides really that uh, how many nodes it needs and all those things really takes care for you it's a really zero of service workers are added and removed based on uh, demand really okay so it's a really quite useful it integrates with uh, bigquery pub sub cloud ml engine and it has connectors with big table and apache kafka and all that uh, the pattern used for streaming is PubSub plus uh, data flow where the PubSub pushes stream the data then uh, it triggers data flow pipeline which process it and which you can write to BigQuery further and that you can use it for dashboard or whatever you want to do. Okay, so that, that's the way our batch perspective is uh, really uh, once the data, once it is there, you trigger the pipeline. Uh, from uh, your compute or uh, different in cloud functions or uh, some and uh, really uh, that it can re really process everything and store data in BigQuery cloud storage everywhere. Okay, the typical pipeline when we say that it's uh, more uh, this pipeline example it has input then you have transform then it is p collection you will find it that's the terminology over there and quite lot so it is really store it is uh, go in the stages input is also you can see in a way it's p collection so it is you have data then you transform it so input it's more as your row by row you pick it up transform uh, in a certain way at a step then it is intermediate again as a p collection then again you transform so you do like step step steps till you reach your output which is there that is needed okay and uh, yeah uh, there are something again exam perspective uh, code it is it, this whole thing is code heavy but that may not be expected in the exam but still there is typical uh, phrase power do and all those kind of thing mm -hmm. maybe there is question on those lines it supports right now language it's uh, you can code in java that was earlier now you can you can code in uh, python and uh, i think now in uh, scala go and everything as well okay but uh, looks like uh, primary use uh, is uh, earlier it was Java. Now Python is also quite uh, widely used. It's uh, quite a good service as such in the use perspective. I have uh, I used it, implemented, and it's really uh, quite powerful. Uh, in, uh, and it, compared to your persistent power and cluster this is really true serverless so it is in that perspective cost effective okay and uh, exam perspective quite important uh, again there you may find question related to what this uh, iam means uh, what access and uh, those kind of thing needed on this pipeline and all that so yeah again it is too detailed so i'm not uh, i just not added over here but exam perspective you may find those related question that what access you need to give on the individual pipeline or if at all or at a project level at a, for different roles kind of thing okay a any question on this no it sounds good yeah okay thank you and the last one is data prep so it is uh, by trifatka okay so it is another company it is uh, you can find it in the marketplace it is data prep so 
uh, in a way this uh, data flow kind of thing is really uh, there is not a very nice UI or something it's like uh, it's really developer tool that way we can see it's it's just you need to code it really speaking and then the, the data prep is a really nice wrapper on top of it. it back it really use data flow but it has a nice uh, browser ui and all that so you can do all the pick and all those things our uh, classical etl uh, tools what we have no? uh, so yeah it is quite that way so you can select and all those uh, do this and uh, fire design your query cleansing you can add rules and all those uh, small cleansing rule and all that everything you can do and then uh, in back really it nothing but it uh, executes that converts that into your data flow job and executes it okay so the pricing is based on how much you consume uh, those uh, resources google resources on top of it i think uh, again this 1.1 uh, kind of thing charges if i'm not wrong it uh, that point one is additional as a trifatka charges okay that's the way it works and just a, just a quick question Atul, here, just in those here. so you said it's kind of uh, data flow in the background uh, so in terms of the charging is it the same charging then or is it kind of the model wise is any any difference in terms of charge or surprising uh, sorry uh, uh, could you repeat your question uh, so yeah you, you just mentioned right that data prep um, is like under under cover it's still kind of invokes the data flow which is like ui ui based so this is ui based and data flow is kind of uh, run behind so in terms of pricing is it the same pricing for both or is it kind of any any difference in terms of pricing if if you're choosing one or the other oh yeah see data flow so whatever charges data flow has on top of it there are data prep charges so okay sorry. okay so i think the the and it is a fix it is 1.1 multiplication so if it is 100 dollar example uh, for uh, your data flow then i think 1.1 .1, the 110 okay. would be for uh, you end up in paying data prep kind of okay yeah. okay Thank if you. I'm not wrong, but in just again, this whole thing keep changing. So we need to check it really how mm -hmm. that uh, current story again. Now Google has that uh, flat billing kind of story as well. So as an enterprise, so I don't know how that works together. Okay. Maybe right. we need to check with the guys. So if you attend Google next and all that November generally in uh, uh, London, it is there. Uh, so uh, you can see these guys, uh, Trifatka guys uh, over there the, generally and uh, yeah, they're okay. quite good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's uh, quite uh, helpful and uh, nice guys really to chat and uh, yeah, interesting. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for that info. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, yeah. So this is quite a useful tool in a way. Uh, there are now some additional as well, what I forgot the name. Uh, it was one more open source now that is as well taken uh, over by google and uh, hopefully that as well we we may see as a uh, one more uh, in this product family but at this was moment, was it looker i think you mentioned looker or something was it looker or was it something different is it looker no no looker is reporting perspective report uh, yeah, you, yeah. Uh, this uh, similar in this family of this uh, etl kind of right okay, okay. okay. yeah uh, I think noted. I forgot it somewhere. Maybe I will share no it. Problems, okay. No yeah. So mm -hmm. that is as well as so we may uh, see some uh, additional uh, fellow in this family now. Once <laughs> now Google has taken over, so maybe it uh, will uh, stabilize and have some uh, managed nice uh, service. Hopefully, we'll use it. Okay. But at this moment, these are the candidates for uh, your data okay so we talked about data pro uh, data flow and data prep okay it's fine so this is processing then uh, now we are going as a, after once the your data is processed we are we have to analyze it and query it okay so it is ingested stored process now we do analyze and query and primary candidate is a really big query so once your process uh, is there it uh, more uh, as we have covered BigQuery already, so I am not added over here. It's more as uh, querying and analyzing is BigQuery. Okay. 
you may consider for uh, analyzing again or querying maybe if you are storing in big table big table is also a candidate for that because when it is just uh, no sql and large data is there uh, you can use it okay and as you mentioned uh, there are again uh, two models for pricing on demand and flat rate for big query okay. now uh, after that this is now machine learning or understanding data where it is the machine learning thought is there now machine learning has become critical component of the analysis phase of data life cycle so uh, okay so you have the data now you how based on that after you analyze it how you can use it to predict outcomes okay so that's where machine learning come into picture uh, so there are two things one is custom machine learning means you have your own model and other is so there are uh, specific apis which are there already so you can use those okay so those APIs are cloud vision, cloud speech to text and natural language, cloud translation, video intelligence, uh, dialogue flow and cloud text to speech. Now, exam perspective, uh, not expected uh, as how exactly machine learning as such or development of model and all that, but you expected that, okay when you will follow approach which kind of approach so machine learning custom machine learning when you have very specific thing and all those things you want to use then you go for custom machine learning custom machine learning or uh, when you have certain uh, these things which are off the shelf we can use it go for this so you may find those related question it's expected that when it is cloud vision mention cloud vision means what okay what it will do how it will identify some uh, maybe some defined logo known logo out of your picture and all that so those kind of question would be there okay even so that you will use this as a of the shell service or api okay uh, that's the expectation on machine learning perspective and uh, if you go up to that first uh, option that's when it is a custom machine learning is there then uh, cloud ml that was earlier service name now that is renamed as ai platform okay that's what I found it. so uh, so it is more as a managed platform to run custom machine learning model at scale so that's the purpose of it so you use it uh, more the step generally happens is uh, uh, you develop your model using tensorflow or your scikit-learn or something on uh, your local machine and use ai platform to manage pre-processing training and prediction when you need it at scale to a uh, large uh, power for training and uh, handle the large data so that's where you use this uh, cloud ml come into picture and then you can use it for even a prediction as well so prediction request could be online or batch okay so uh, cloud ml really in that space so more as a train and even a deploy and it's more as a predict kind of thing you can use okay so the cloud ml intra integrates with data flow for a data pre-processing uh, so you can access data from cloud storage store it in cloud storage or bigquery it integrates with cloud load balancing to serve online prediction at a scale so it is really when it is uh, machine learning cycle is you develop the model locally then uh, or anywhere you can uh, develop it over here and then uh, you train it which is at a large scale and then when you deploy uh, the model is available you consume it for predict and the prediction happens as it is online and batch when it is online is there it's uh, really you should there would be api call or something you execute one request to predict something example your cells so you can see my sales purpose for uh, maybe next week or something that could be one request kind of thing online so it, those requests could be handled uh, from your uh, mobile app or your web application or somewhere and uh, you can use it can pass through via the cloud load balancing as such 
and uh, the, the similar thing you can uh, maybe if you have multiple things to predict then you can store those uh, inputs as a cloud storage and then submit in a batch for a prediction okay then uh, third point is here develop and test tensor flow model complete in google cloud using data lab and jupyter notebooks and then use ai platform large scale training and prediction workload that's what we said already okay so jupyter notebook is nothing but uh, it's uh, i think uh, hope everybody knows it's more as a quite a interactive tool which is uh, you can host it uh, really uh, on your uh, desktop laptop and it integrates with uh, it generally language uses python but uh, you, it, you can use even uh, java code and all those uh, to develop it you can share that notebook uh, there and uh, google uh, data lab which is a uh, next uh, really component it is where it is nothing but a manage jupyter notebook but it only uh, supports uh, python as such where it is uh, google cloud data lab is considered okay uh, then any question on this really cloud ml uh, as such this is exam perspective more in that way you can uh, it is not as a serverless component you need to uh, really launch a cluster and all that and uh, so you may have certain uh, combination of it what would be your master what would be your uh, uh, worker nodes and uh, those kind of thing and they're even for parameter as such for that you need access okay you can use preemptable instance as well for this and you may expect question related to this really okay what would be the ratio of your primary to worker to your uh, parameter server then uh, can we use preemptable those kind of thing options okay so th those related things that level understanding is expected in a exam hmm? okay and uh, these are i just listed additional options as such for processing so is your normal compute or your kubernetes engine or cloud functions so, if you have your existing uh, code which you want us to still execute in that way example your javascripts are there which are doing something processing you want to use it in your pipeline you can still execute it and have a compute engine there you execute it or your whatever java your code or your even sql and all that so you can use in that way you can launch or use a kubernetes engine or launch it and just on demand and push the code as a docker entire thing and you can execute it docker will contain your code as well as related libraries and all that and it can execute in that way so that is possible you can use in that way and cloud function which is nothing but uh, uh, really small compute you can say it's really launch it based on some event that when the file is received on your cloud storage or those kind of events are there you can trigger this cloud function which is uh, nothing but small compute it so life is really nine minutes as such after that it is time bound after that it vanishes so that small execution it can do rather than you keeping the your persistent compute and all that and you get uh, charged in that way only for small thing so you can use it for triggering uh, your uh, data flow pipeline or triggering something uh, read this file or copying pushing it somewhere those kind of thing you can use its cloud function okay so these are all uh, still processing options which are not uh, listed as such in uh, google there but practically you end up in using that okay so i think we covered all the processing stuff any question uh, or can we go further this is the last step any question uh, till now or anybody want to add anything so how is the market like in the uk there are really uh, uh, a big use of, of, of these modules or it's still companies are just 
experimenting and learning and it's not real implementation in your experience mm no, i think he, all combination is there actually you see the the way uh, i think the mostly you know what i see is if you go hmm, this way it works really when it is new data processing pipeline is there hmm, then you can still use cloud data flow uh there is still some what i my experience what i worked in some organization there was uh, it was quite app, still it was apprehension to use it hmm? mm, now there are multiple reasons for that some are uh, uh, more sensitive reasons as such as well because uh, how much control you want to give it because here what happens is it can allocate uh, any uh, you can consume any power no it's on demand so how you can control it giving access to it and those kind of data prox yeah it is still used but uh, what it was mentioned earlier that's uh, those challenges are still there but i think people use data prox uh, in that way because still whatever you say the existing low workload is there right and uh, hadoop and our organization have it and nobody want to lose it so you end up in having cloud data proc kind of thing or really everything hosted on a compute so that is as well there as a first step so yeah this whole combination is there so practically what i see is uh, experience wise it's people use maybe as a lift and shift kind of thing man just use it as a computer to start with then slowly uh, uh, try to use data proc kind of on demand cluster and all those so those kind of scenario i uh, used it rather that it uh, it helps to save cost quite a lot rather than big your persistent cluster uh, when you keep maintain your uh, persistent cluster as a low capacity and use the flex cluster for uh, when you want to really use for processing especially like weekly jobs and all those kind of thing so in supply chain when you want your weekly replenishment jobs so generally our trade earlier way was you design or for the maximum capacity what you need it right your end of week job or end of day end of month or those kind of thing and here exactly what you can do it is whatever your uh, regular use is needed maybe you can use that provision that as a cluster use it and when you need high capacity really use on demand clusters so those kind of usage is there at in industry as well in the uk data flow yes for the new work is there in, you go for it and yes it's people have used it i also used in that way only uh, when there is new stuff was there yeah we proposed it and uh, we used it uh thanks atul uh, so just to add uh, here uh, in the uk uh, especially like around london and uh, nearby places because there are a lot of financial companies right so we are seeing a lot of demand specifically related to big data big query uh, data management data processing on over the cloud to like different uh, cloud providers such as gcp aws azure etc even ibm uh, so there are a lot of uh, customers who are talking about this so even if you just consider percentage wise i would say like 60% of the 60 65% of the requirements are currently coming for big data and big query based solutions because most of the banks have got big clusters uh, big data clusters a lot of data they are dealing with which they want to migrate a lot of financial companies have the same one even uh, just giving you one example LS lsc which is like london stock exchange they have got a big cluster they are currently migrating everything on aws and gcp so if you just consider uk yeah there is a lot of demand for this and even 
the demand for the data processing management over uh, cloud evolves increasing. So these are like two of the very niche areas at the minute where you would see a lot of companies uh, either either doing the uh, like uh, just application modernizations or hiring the people. I mean, if you just consider the career wise growth, uh, there is a lot of growth in these two specific areas compared to others. Uh, I don't know whether I really uh, answered your question, Abdullah, but these are it's the things perfect. which, which yeah, we start as a consultant. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Both. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Just, just a bit for, more further on that, Gaurav. Um, what you said is like um, both when you uh, when you said about LSE, you said about both AWS and uh, GCP. Is it like again a multi-cloud offering? Um, as every 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 financial company, wherever you go, especially yeah. related to the big clients who have mm -hmm. got vast uh, customer base, they don't want to get locked in with the single one. cloud. Right. They, so whatever they they want to implement, that will always be multi-cloud. Even so, there are I have seen scenarios where, yeah. uh, like I, my whole solution as yep. a cloud is running on GCP. But I have got the whole solution running, running as a as a uh, backup on the on AWS. So it's right. like uh, how how you want to basically deal with the the failovers, right? And any any reason because this is the second time. Like I think you were um, the very first uh, session when you were saying about Lloyd's also because you did a small session then. Uh, I think yeah. it was to do with the native one, but then you continued mm -hmm. and you were saying about um, the work in um, in Lloyd's again. You were saying there. Like for a backup solution, they are looking for AWS, but the front, uh, the the production system is more on GCP. Is is it what the trend you're looking? Like you're seeing the trend shifting to GCP? This, or is, this is yeah, this is the trend because yeah. it depends. As a customer, when I do my course management and and modelization, uh, so I basically see which services are cost efficient on GCP, which one are on AWS. And which one, or IBM, or uh, SAP, or I uh, like uh, uh, Azure, whichever doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. So based on those cost operating models, I will I will choose the the cloud providers for those services, and then I will basically design my whole architecture to make sure in the failover scenarios my services just fail over to the less costing uh, uh, like whichever is the less Post uh, cloud provider, who, whoever is giving me the same services in the let's say second uh, man, uh, post wise in the second place or maybe third place, whichever. Right. So th this is the trend which will go further again because mm -hmm. that's something which most of the big clients are asking because of of the lockings and uh, they don't want to get locked in with the provider and. Uh, because of the costing uh, perspective as well, because every cloud provider changed the costing models uh, as, as the market uh, is growing. So one of the example is recently we have seen that uh, the BigQuery flat rate was, uh, as Atul was mentioning uh, about the flat rate scheme. So it used to be like 40,000 per 500 uh, slots last year. Now it recently has got changed to 10,000. So most of the guys who were that trend uh, last year were thinking like BigQuery is quite expensive is now Coming back, okay. seeing, a, uh, seeing a lot of uh, appetite here because yep. the, the cost is reduced, uh, reduced drastically. Right. And uh, I think also the vendors, uh, Amazon and Google, they understood this very clearly and they are uh, making things easy to migrate and access, like you can access storage on each side much easier than you would access it even from um, on-premise compared to on cloud. There is some sort of understanding to make this possible between them. Yeah, that is also another very valid point. So even, even if you just uh, uh, think about the the shifting right uh, towards the multi-cloud and hybrid cloud journey this year is going to be massive. So I was working on one of the uh, cloud comparison reports, and I was doing the comparison about 
the hybrid and multi cloud tooling sets so i found that google is very aggressive in this area because google is uh, primarily focusing on c and cf project so they recently like i think last year mid of last year they introduced anthos and azure uh, has got azure arc and uh, there is another one more tool which azure has got uh, aws has got outposts uh, sap has got uh, hanzo uh, and ibm has got something similar so there are a lot of uh, all these cloud providers are basically putting a lot of emphasis on this area because that is something which is basically getting on demand day by day from every customer right so uh, you you also need to see the trend like how all these big uh, cloud providers are basically producing the solutions to make the life easier for the clients uh, so like the anthos is is mostly currently supporting you uh, like gk based uh, solutions so if you have got any anything in house running on vmware you can just use anthos and migrate everything quickly on gk and it, you basically will be able to do the whole cloud management via your gcp dashboards which is like great uh, every client want to have a, a single holistic view of the overall uh, architecture or overall uh, infrastructure which they are running and they want to manage it through a single uh, dashboard so anthos giving you that capability so another is like aws as uh, outpost which is like more a kind of a proprietary solution uh, coming from aws and it is quite cost like it's it, it, there is a lot of cost involved in that because you will have to buy the hardware to implement this solution while azure and gcp they there is more subscription based you just need the subscription and then after once you have the subscription you can basically use these services to do the overall migration which is like quite cost effective and they are there are a lot of like uh, uh, internal they are running a lot of uh, data models to support your app modernization so by default it is lifting and shifting as atul mentioned but again there is a lot of uh, intelligence uh, uh, what what do you say connectors available which the, you can hook in and then basically run a lot of like app modernization features uh, especially related to the uh, 12 factors uh, principles like uh, splitting the overall monolithics into into a, a little bit of microservices just to streamline the overall process so that's something which i think everybody uh, all of us should, should focus on that where the market is is going and then we should focus on how basically we leverage that uh, demand and 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 um, make our career in that one because for the next 5 years i i i don't have any uh, issue like uh, I, I i i think that in the next 5 years it will be always hybrid and multi cloud now yeah. hybrid will also die soon because yeah, multi cloud yeah. is something right. that every company is going ahead with yeah it would be combination always and everywhere it would be we are in the we are part of journey really okay so yeah yes thanks thanks for the info yeah thanks yeah yeah, yeah. okay so i think let's uh, go ahead uh, with the last life cycle stage it's more uh, explore and visualize so we have ingested it we have uh, stored it we have processed it and now we are uh, explore and visualize so it's a final step uh, it's uh, in depth data exploration and visualization to better understand the results so that's the most important what we had done for this processing and analysis exploration is more related to data scientist data exploration so you explore the data and visualize is more as a reporting and dashboard so exploring is data science it's a couple of lines over there is process of deriving values from raw data sets or we can say process data sets it's a both way so to do so data scientists might combine uh, some different data sets some public here and there everything they can do so always it would be combination of uh, uh, typical uh, you use this whatever process data which is there 
then you can use even your raw data which is just ingested or you have your own data you load it from somewhere everything you combine try to uh, really uh, proceed do this uh, wherever that custom process and uh, arrive at okay insights and uh, predict based on that okay and that that's where it stands and uh, the two we can use the services data lab is the service it's uh, more as a uh, manage jupyter uh, notebook so it's a interactive data insight it's web-based tool you can use to explore analyze and visualize as well so it's a jupyter notebook so that supports all this visualization part but you need to import all the libraries necessaries okay so it's a data science toolkit pandas numpy scikit-learn and matplotlib so everything you can import all those libraries and uh, you can use it it supports for uh, tensorflow and uh, data flow as well tensorflow is nothing but it's really ml uh, uh, what it's uh, kit really from uh, uh, google okay so that is uh, openly available uh, as open source but that is actually inbuilt support over here so you can uh, launch it the question you can exit uh, expect in exam perspective is how you can uh, use the data lab uh, or how you can share it's more as a data lab you can have your notebook instead of developing jupyter notebook anyway you can develop it on your own on desktop and all that data lab uh, where you can have it as a common thing you can share it across different uh, data scientists and team and all that so you can expect questions more in that way and uh, eventually that is nothing but uh, in beneath it really spin off the compute engine and it uh, really stores all those notebooks over there hmm? so those uh, notebooks maintain their state and can be shared between data scientists as well that you can publish it anywhere okay so uh, that's where it's uh, it only at this moment i think it supports only python as such as a language in data lab but as a jupyter notebook you can uh, install it on your laptop and uh, it supports uh, additional language like uh, java and all those as well okay so another thing is data data science ecosystems means uh, it's a regular stuff which is a where it is a managed component is not there you can install it on the compute and you can use it like r studio that microsoft machine learning server and jupyter hub so you can install it and use it but as then it becomes part of uh, your google family as such you can use uh, the server would be managed and you can use logging and all those things monitoring bit for what is that okay so you can use in that way as part of ecosystem okay. and uh, i think this is the last bit is uh, google data studio that is nothing but your visualization uh, part uh, to the reporting tool is g suit not as such google compute but it is g suit uh, as such but it integrates it has uh, quite good say, integration with the google sheet cloud sql bigquery and all that it it is uh, yeah i will say it is still yeah it's quite okay it is a free first of all so and it's getting quite enriched means i attended one google uh, that even the gdg event it, it's uh, there the product uh, one of the product team member was there he mentioned uh, yeah it's still for google it is uh, emphasize on that uh, they are investing it and making it more rich now they acquired looker as such which is a more matured product already but the answer was yes still they they have this as a product so maybe quick way and all that is more as a google studio and if you want more as enterprise or something as a reporting maybe look at i don't know how they want to use uh, or where the both will fit but still it is there it's quite uh, easy stuff exam perspective you may find some question more as how you can share or uh, the option of uh, it really caches the queries which are there already so related to that you may expect some question hmm? then uh, how you define dimension and related things so those kind of questions you may expect 
in the exam. Okay. Just a, just a quick one, uh, Natalia. You said like um, they are kind of enriching the visualization and other other tool sets. So, in your experience, have you come across like or or got of uh, have you have you come across uh, or anyone on the on the on the on the call actually? Have you come across any other products that is currently being used and? Yeah, yeah it... it's. Uh... Yeah, yeah, it's cloud use earlier. It was cloud. Uh, sorry, it's Tableau was used quite a lot. Tableau, yeah. So, yeah, it connects to BigQuery and even Cloud SQL. Then use even uh, business object. So now yeah. it is a SAP uh, BO. So yeah. that is used and it connects and it worked quite well. Okay, no problem as such. Even uh, compared to the Tableau when we use, what we found it is that compared to Tableau server, in fact, uh, Tableau with the BigQuery combination works quite faster. Okay, performance wise, if the query get fired and the BigQuery, that is much faster in fact. Okay, so yeah, it connects, everything connects it and you can use it. Even Power BI, I think it connects. Okay, and you can use it. It's possible. Okay, that's my experience as such. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Uh, generally, whatever you have product with an organization, use it. It's simple. It's nothing uh, to change as such. It everything supports. Uh, it's just uh, it's just the question of, uh, was more from um, like you know the licenses and all because I've I've kind of uh, used business objects a lot in my um, like career. Like of course, man, like I would say seven to eight years in business objects, and somewhere down the line, what we have seen is. Um, we had like NetEase and other other uh, ecosystem coming in, in in the architectural landscape. And what we've seen is people want to move into one solution. Um, like if you're going through Google Cloud, is it like um, the whole visualization is all, if they are offering as part of that. I've seen personally um, the management and, and like higher ups, they tend to, when, when it comes to the decision making, they, they kind of tend to move to that rather than kind of uh, having Again, I'm not saying about big financial organizations wherein from competition and flexibility perspective, they do want it. So that I could understand from cloud offerings, but as such from a reporting tool set and all some, somewhere they get a better deal if they, they stick to one provider as a whole solution from end to end, which is why I was asking that, that question, have you seen a shift with more uh, Google, Google kind of putting more in uh, like your Looker or other, other data sets, the clients mm. are willing to go, go that, way or are they still using and is there any benefit have you seen any any such trends happening okay my experience till now is uh, people or whatever i came across mostly using the existing reporting tools right okay yeah. so um, maybe maybe multiple reason already they have licenses okay yes, that's yes. where it started <laughs> yes yes and already there are quite a dashboard or a reporting that they don't want to change it and, some migration and, all. Yes, and yes, they don't want to have one more thing because this anyway this migration is there on cards so why to change that as well hmm? yeah but what i found is uh, though we are earlier it says tableau and all those they were hosted on uh, data center that mm -hmm. hosting that is now hosted on uh, google compute kind of thing okay so right. that hosting has happened even be business object okay right okay so in terms that of connectivity and all like they mm. have uh, like um like everything works there because the other other challenge what we have seen was in mind this was like we, we went uh, early days it was like obie was very new to the market they did it but then somewhere down the line, uh, we had to go back to business objects and Tableau mm. was also not a mature product. So it, they started visualization and then um, so they, they went back to uh, you know the design studio and stuff, yeah. uh, which is where, but then you have seen all, all these tools working from like in terms of connectivity and all, all it's all, it's all uh, like seamless and it, it, it does provides the whole ecosystem in terms of visualization and such. Um, so yeah, that's, looks promising in terms of it's just um, in terms of when we do these um, like um, installation and all uh, is it like do we have mostly what we have what I've seen is from GCP is like more, more or less um, the the quick labs and all is kind of more when you're focusing on a particular solutions more related to how you use Google but when you kind of integrate the third party is it like are there any more um, is it on the Google 
websites or or like the learning learning places where you could get those or like if i want to install business objects and all is it something which is really there have, have you come across those things or yeah when we tried it really we tried it with uh, normal as one more sources bigquery jdbc connection and it to work for business object okay. w is really adopter connector is there okay right okay yeah. so that way but now i think it, there are more and more connectors get added most probably for business object also might be there now okay okay, okay. but it, it connect it, we tried it and it worked okay so it's <laughs> not, really it was not a challenge it right, worked okay. the same okay. and it's now mostly everybody all the reporting tools connects to everybody really right. it's okay. regardless okay so that's where reporting bit now google sheet as well is quite used as a visualization it's uh, i think everybody knows normal spreadsheet it's part of g suite though but it collaborates quite nicely with uh, all these uh, different means you can read it from uh, bigquery even cloud sql and all those you can use it which, and it has internal app script uh, it's uh, means function the macro kind of thing you can code it it is also quite powerful you can write down all these uh, scripts to even process as well okay so for a small processing you can use it and uh, that is also quite good okay it's uh, used it it's, you can consider very well this as an option okay for... uh, then the last two bits now i just added this couple of things not exactly part of uh, this stack in that whole theme of uh, data as such uh, but it's more as a orchestration and scheduler so it's more this cloud composer is in the based on apache airflow now that is available on google cloud so it is more as a managed workflow orchestration so you can define workflows as a dags and you can connect it to different google component as well as uh, other components as well uh, on prem or other uh, cloud and you can really have end to end uh, workflow okay single orchestration tool and it is a manage on demand kind of use so use it at quite good tool it connect python based mostly it connects to quite a lot thing in fact you can use on premise it connects to teradata the way we have used it's uh, teradata it connects then uh, it can uh, one dag to read it from there then push it into your uh, big uh, query storage then you can from there another dag to really uh, uh, execute certain all the your processing layers to build your analytic on data warehousing layer those kind of thing okay so yeah this whole whole workflows we used it uh, for one for even the initial migration as well what we talked about now those kind of thing one time and then monthly kind of one time was more as a with the equipment but after that it was monthly kind of thing we used it and even for your daily delta okay so yeah it is a good tool uh, it's now available we used it at that time in fact airflow hosted on uh, compute but now it is available as uh, google family so cloud composer and uh, one more thing it is cloud scheduler it is more you can schedule something kind of more as a con job kind of thing earlier it was not as a separate component if you need it only it is available as part of app engine as a con job then now it is available as a separate one you can use it including to schedule and all that everything so that is also useful now scheduler okay and i think that's where is my uh, last slide hope uh, it is useful